Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Christmas morning. So today I'd like to expound on a video that I did uh, a few days ago, a mediocre holiday season border pair with Lewis Rossman, where I was talking about the proper way to look for a short and one of the improper ways to look for a short circuit. I received several email follow-ups to that video from people that seem confused, so I'd like to go over this in some more detail. This is something I think is very important. I was linked to a video, and I'm not going to say who made it because I just don't want to start drama or any sort of us versus them sort of little like seeming like I'm crapping on somebody. I really just want to keep this video to tactics rather than going over individuals in this case. But there is an old board repair video where somebody is injecting voltage into a board and then killing the components on that particular line while they're looking for a short. There is the idea that if there is a three volt line, I can inject up to three volts to find a short. If it's five volts, I can inject up to five volts to find the short. If it's 12 volts, I can inject up to 12 volts to find the short because every component on the five volt line should be able to handle five volts, right? And that could not be further from the truth. Yes, every component on that line will be able to handle five volts. However, there is something regarding buck converters that you're probably not thinking about that will massively screw you over as it did in this one video where there was a person, not gonna name names, that wound up destroying their board live on video where they wound up sending voltage to components that they didn't know they were sending voltage to while they were looking for the short. This is a great way to kill a CPU, a GPU, RAM, and SSD, almost everything in the machine if you are not very careful with your short detection methodology and you don't do a couple of basic measurements first. So I think it's very important that you all understand what this is so that you don't kill anything. So the first thing we need to do is let's just go over what a short circuit is for those of you who are confused. A short circuit, and I'm just going to use this little guide that I created in Microsoft Paint eight years ago here to show you. This is a little red line, and it shows the path of voltage you know, through the circuit. So here we have power that is going to the system, to PPBESH G3 hot, and this is a capacitor to ground. Now, let's say this capacitor to ground over here broke, and these two plates were touching. Instead of the two plates being like this, you know, it got smacked, so now the plates are touching. You would get what's called a short circuit to ground. So instead of the circuit making its way all the way through, it stops short over here. That's why we call it a short. Before the power can flow to the system, since this component that is going to ground is now essentially acting as a wire, instead of this capacitor acting as a smoothing agent and, you know, just making sure that there is less ripple in the system and also kind of acting a bit as a battery, it is now acting as a wire because the two plates are now touching and now everything is going to ground. That is a short circuit to ground. Now, when you have a short circuit to ground, one of the things that people will do is they will inject voltage and you will figure out exactly which one is getting hot. So let's just say over here that this was ground and this over here was five volts that I'm injecting. Now, whichever component is shorted to ground, and in this case, the component that is shorted to ground is the one where I drew this little red line on the plate demonstrating that instead of these two plates being discrete and separate, over here they're touching. Whichever component is shorted to ground, if I inject five volts over here and attach the ground to my power supply over here, is going to have all of that power flowing through it. It is going to be what's completing the circuit. And as a result of that being the component that's completing the circuit, it is going to get very, very warm. So one of the things that people will do is they will inject voltage into the board in order to find the short. And whatever's getting hot is the thing that's creating the short. And now they've solved the problem. Now, again, there is this idea that if I have a three volt line, I can put three volts into it because every component on that line is made for three volts. This is going to be 12.6 volts. And let me just move my head out of the way over here since I am standing in the way. So if we just zoom in over here, this cap is made for 25 volts. This cap is made for 50 volts. Uh, this cap over here looks like it is made for 25 volts. 50 volts. So everything on this line is made for way more than that. So I should have absolutely no problem injecting to, you know, let's say 12 volts into the 12 volt line, right? Wrong. Let's go over why that is the case. So in order to go over why that is the case, we need to go over what a buck converter is and what it does. So let's go over what a buck converter is with a visual representation of that. So a buck converter is going to take a higher voltage and turn it into a lower voltage. Uh, voltage dividers do the same thing, but it's very inefficient. So we're just gonna take a look at a circuit like this, right? Now, this is a buck converter. So what we do is, we let's say we're starting with a high voltage, like eight, it's gonna look like this on my oscilloscope, and then it's going to take this eight volts and switch it on and off, on and off. So we have a little bit of eight volts and a lot of zero, a little bit of eight volts, and a lot of zero. And at the end of it, that's going to come out to approximately 0.8 volts. And if you want to understand how this circuit is doing that, I have an illustration over here 
that shows you. So over here, you have eight volts being fed into this circuit. This transistor is going to turn on and off and on and off and on and off. And as a result of it turning on and off, you can have a little bit of eight, a lot of zero, a little bit of eight, a lot of zero. And over here, this is ground, so that's zero. Now, after this inductor, you're going to have it all smooth out after it goes to the inductor. So instead of it being a little bit of eight and a lot of zero, it just turns into an, what, what this is essentially an averaging of it, which is 0 0.8, nice and smooth. Again, your CPU doesn't want a little bit of eight volts and a lot of zero. It wants just 0 0.8 volts consistently. So this is a buck converter. Now, let's say that your short circuit is not because a capacitor has failed, but rather because a part of a buck converter has failed. Let's say this is stuck. And as a result of this being stuck, it no longer switches. It's just on and letting voltage through all the time. If this is stuck on and letting voltage through all the time, your short to ground may not be through a capacitor. It may actually be through the CPU or this circuit over here. So let's say that this is stuck on, right? This transistor is broken. The buck converter is broken and it is stuck on all the time. When I inject eight volts into PP bus G3 hot to see what's getting warm, let's say that this is stuck on. So instead of supplying 0 0.8 volts to my CPU, if this whole circuit is stuck and broken, now whatever goes through this transistor, which is PP bus G3 hot, is going to go straight to my CPU. So if I have an eight volt power line, even if I only inject 2.5 volts into there and my CPU is not made for more than 0.8 volts, I have now killed my CPU because I send two volts straight to the CPU. Now you think, well, all I did was inject two volts onto PP bus G3 hot, but PP bus G3 hot is powering these chipsets that then take the 8.5 volts from PP bus G3 hot and turn it into five volts for this and turn it into 3.3 volts for let's, uh, for something else, or turn it into 1.8 volts for the Ram, turn it into 0 0.8 volts for the CPU, turn it into 2.7 volts for the SSD or for the NAND. So if any one of those chips, if any one of those buck converters is what is causing your short circuit, that means that whatever you put into the power line that looks shorted is now going to go directly into what that broken circuit is powering, which means that if you inject, let's say, four volts into there, even if it's a 12 volt line, what if it's the CPU, this buck converter that was broken? Now you just send four volts to your CPU and it's expecting 0.8. What if it was the NAND chip that was shorted? That's supposed to take PP bus G3 hot at eight or 12 volts and turn it into 2.7 volts. You just put four volts into PP bus G3 hot. And if that buck converter is stuck, that means you just send four volts to your SSD. Your data is gone. What if it was to your GPU? Now again, your GPU is expecting 1.2 volts. You just sent it four. So here's what you should do. The first thing you should do whenever you inject voltage is inject a voltage into your power rail that is equivalent or lower than the minimum voltage rail in that system. So look through your voltage rails and let's say the lowest voltage rail in that entire system is 0.8 volts. That's the lowest one. Start with 0.8 volts. That means even if you don't do any checking beforehand, you're not going to kill your system because you've just injected 0 0.8 volts. So even if the CPU buck converter is dead and you didn't check it to see if that was potentially the cause of your problem, you still haven't caused anything bad because you're sending 0 0.8 volts to the 0 0.8 volt line. So I would suggest that you start when you're injecting voltage with whatever is equivalent or lower than the lowest voltage in your system, the lowest voltage rail in your system. The second thing I would suggest you do is if you have a shorted power power line like PP bus G3 hot is you check the resistance between PP bus G3 hot and all of your main coils. So what you can do, and this is something that I often will wind up doing off camera because it can just kind of be kind of boring and take a while, is you, what you'll do is you will take your multimeter and you, let's say PP bus G3 hot is shorted. You'll take the black probe, put it on resistance, put that on PP bus G3 hot and then take the red probe and then measure on every main coil. So for instance, if I have a zero ohm short between PP bus G3 hot and then this little buck converter coil over here that's going to the CPU, then I can then make the assumption or at least the start investigating whether this transistor is stuck, whether or not there is any isolation between PP bus G3 hot and this inductor. Is this always on? Is this always sending voltage through? Is this transistor closed and letting shit through when it's not supposed to? It, I do that with all my main lines. So if PP bus G3 hot is shorted, I will check the resistance between PP bus G3 hot and my 5 volt coil, my 3.3 volt coil, 1.8 volt coil, CPU coil, SSD coil. And if none of them are shorted, if none of them are shorted, then I will start out my power supply and I will turn it on even if I'm injecting into a 12 volt line, starting with the lowest voltage available in the computer. 
something like 0.8, and then I'll feel around that area. So let's say that I measured to see that it's not shorted to the CPU. I will still check the CPU for heat. I still want to see, just in case I miss something, with the thermal camera with my hand, is the CPU getting warm? Is the SSD getting warm? Is the RAM getting warm? Is anything on that line getting warm that would indicate that its buck converter is broken before I start cranking up that voltage, anything higher than CPU vCore? And then you slowly go from there. However, if what you do is you just say, well, my five volt rail is shorted, I'm gonna start with putting three volts into it because that's still two volts lower than five volts. Your five volt rail may be what is responsible for sending a CPU, which is the most expensive part of your system, 0 0.8 volts. It may t That may be what's powering the buck converter. And if it is, you inject three volts into your five volt rail and you think it's okay, but if this transistor is stuck, you just send three volts over to your CPU and it's now dead. This is more and more important with modern machines where the storage is soldered onto the machine. More and more computers, even machines not made by, devices not made by Apple, have the storage soldered onto the motherboard. And when that is the case, there is no take backsies here. There is no, well, you know, I can go, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go to the Apple store and I'll buy you a replacement because we messed up, mea culpa, we screwed up your board. When you do that, you could be screwing up their baby pictures, you could be screwing up their finances, you could be screwing up their business because all of their data is on a chip that you just send five volts to because you are being careless with your short detection. So something that you should be extremely careful with over here. A, when you do short detection, just because it's a high voltage rail, doesn't mean that you inject voltage that is higher than the lowest voltage rail in the computer. B, what you should do is when you have a shorted rail, check the resistance between that shorted rail and other rails that it may be powering in the system, such as the 5 volt, 3.3 volt, 1.8 volt, CPU V core, and everything else, and so on and so forth. Let me know if this makes a little bit more sense. Hopefully it does, and hopefully you were able to learn something from it. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I hope that you all have a great Christmas, happy holiday, enjoy yourselves, and try to avoid stress into the new year. Bye now.